what what do i look at i look at a world which accepts my people without the differences and also even if we are different everyone is different in my opinion everyone is different so cool. unless you are more open in your thinking that is what i'm trying to create is a society that does not look at the differences but looks at the person behind the difference also trying to get give them a quality of life the most important thing for me always was quality of life because if you have a ailing child even society finds that difficult there is also the other thing that we wanted to uh, enhance their life aspirations and give them a chance to be valued members of our society which should be welcoming I am Jitendra Singh, banker turned entrepreneur and author of the book Perfect Mastering the Art of Selling. I welcome you to read my story where I interview authors, speakers, coaches, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and more. Today I have with me Dr. Surekha Ramchandran. She is the founder of DSFI and DSAT. She has been a visionary in the field of Down syndrome in India. Uh, decided to help parents with children like her daughter Bubbly, who was diagnosed with Down syndrome during the 1980s. There were no specific center for those uh, with Down syndrome, and parents had limited access to experts and guidance. In response, she created the Down Syndrome Federation of India, which offers comprehensive help and resources to those uh, down with uh, Down syndrome and their families. Dr. Ramchandran is passionate about her work and the importance. of early interventions she has contributed to down syndrome awareness in india and globally through lectures and books holding a phd in cognitive defects and uh, depression in down syndrome from the university of madras she stays informed of the latest development in the field of in the field by traveling worldwide she has authored three books with love from bubbly a child with down syndrome a referral guide life starts at 16 down syndrome and down but not out bubbly's story at present dsfi and a member of the asia pacific down syndrome federation dr ramchandran aims to spread awareness of down syndrome in developing nations many countries including india and other south nations incorrectly group down syndrome mentioned mental retardedness her main goal is to spread the message that down syndrome is a genetic medical disorder and that can be managed with early interventions and care making india a more inclusive country for those with down syndrome so today she will be discussing with us about her life journey so let us hear from her welcome ma'am the platform is open and now over to you so much for giving us this platform and uh, it is an honor to be interviewed by you uh, yes um, down syndrome from where it was in the 80s has moved i cannot tell you it has moved worlds and boundaries and uh, we t- it has taken a lot of effort because uh, you know in the 80s when they used to diagnose children with down syndrome uh, they used to classify them uh, in different categories like the, w- the word mentally retarded was still used very easily and uh, or they would say your child would not uh, last you know uh, um, would not get through tomorrow because of the medical complications it took us uh, some time to uh, try to fathom what they were saying your first question says why did you come here or what was it that uh, you have a uh, foreseen in your uh, in your life that you brought you into this uh, no one is prepared let me tell you mr jitender for a child born with a challenge no one in the world is mentally or uh, emotionally uh, in any way ready to receive a child even with a small challenge but these challenges are in my uh, in my imagination or in my lifetime i realized were magnified by the people who were giving us that information so what was the purpose of all this was only one thing to empower the medical world to empower parents and make sure that our children were given a platform where they would showcase their talent which they are full of you will not believe the amount of talent our children have which was not diagnosed or um, i mean discovered in the 80s and 90s so it took us 20 years the first two decades were just trying to get our bearings right and uh, wondering whether we were doing the right thing by teaching parents 
and creating groups around so i did not start the down syndrome federation of india initially it was only the down syndrome association of tamil nadu because in india knowing the number of languages i knew once i once i crossed my boundary and i went into the neighboring state i would face challenges so i had to first get my uh, you know uh, foundation trying to understand where was it and what it meant because today we don't even use the word down syndrome we right. use the word trisomy 21 and trisomy 21 is very beautifully explained by us when we after we did the research so you can understand my background was not because i was uh, i was not mentally ready for all this but because i am a different type of person i took it up on me because i had seen parents around me closing the doors and not allowing us to come to their houses so that's where it began right so uh, mm-hmm. ma'am let's uh, begin with the first question so that is related to like when we are growing we always have certain thoughts that we want to grow up and we want to choose a specific career so on to that uh, from your personal life i would like to know like how did your past life has affected the person who you wanted to be in your life and what you are let me tell you one thing 45 years ago we never had any choices <laughs> So right. you people are coming from a different world where you're given choices. If our parents said you do history, we did history. So there was no uh, such thing that you know uh, we were um, motivated to get into a profession. Our jobs were finish your college, get married, have children. So it was the same in my life, except that I was a little more ambitious. <laughs> so uh, what I did was I. So uh, it, it was like I had done my masters in history. and i was uh, trying to get into law which was cut short because i got married but what i believe is that you learn all your values in your life from just watching your parents you know the word sanskar is such a beautiful strong word and what i did see from my parents was sharing and they cared for everyone who walked into their house so we were a very open family and we did not like anyone who had a problem or uh, were emotionally disturbed so i grew up in that background so when i got married i really realized that there was so much to do in the world and i started in a small way so it wasn't easy but that was my background that's really uh, great ma'am you rightly pointed out at that point in time there were hardly any career choices available and also what parents were uh, saying we had to follow and i am also a 1980s kid so i can relate to it so now ma'am moving on to the next one if i talk about things you are passionate about in your life so what are those things Well I uh, uh, you know actually I wanted to always get into law and uh, I've always been that type of person who cannot uh, uh, prove my point so if, uh, if whether I became a lawyer or not I needed that background for myself so I went into colleges I did my uh, law from um, Mysore and after that soon after that in 81 my daughter was born so that sort of changed my entire direction and course in my life it was never the same ever again it wasn't that i was thinking about myself or my future there was no choice i had just jumped into that world which was absolutely magical and uh, i was looking at at uh, transforming lives uh, through what i was learning from my daughter and and there was very little information mr jitendra i have to tell you that we come from a background where there are no internet there are no websites there are no books there's no one talking to you people will shun you if you said you are a child who was different you were the doors were shut on you so but we were ready for all that i was ready for that i i did not think it was an issue because that was their way of looking at it i wanted to change that and that is where i started so uh, you rightly pointed out ma'am that was the time when th- th- these things were really difficult for a child born with some kind of disability or problem so very hard times those were so uh, that's the thing like you started from that point and now you have worked so hard so far 30 40 years you have been into this field and now we can see that the world is changing and people are accepting and not only accepting they are uh, recognizing the value of these things so uh, ma'am if i talk about your work you. experiences like how uh, did you started your career and what all you did for that 
Yeah, so like I said, the coming in of bubbly into our world, uh, just like in the universe, everyone in the 80s, we were going through this, uh, uh, you know, it was it was quite an agonizing situation because there were so many medical complications. So I tra- started traveling because I had to learn and uh, my travels went all over the world trying to uh, get information, but it didn't seem to really help because I had to first deal with my own medical teams who and the doctors in our country who had to necessarily understand the subject. So I started attending pediatric conferences so that the pediatricians who are the first people to see our babies are more positive. So that was where I started from. And I moved across boundaries and went into various states, found language a problem. So we started creating parent support groups. And uh, yes, uh, so it was, uh, we are only again and again going back to the 80s and 90s. But it, it was like a very receptive crowd and the doctors were ready to listen to us. In initially, they thought we were exaggerating things because we were parents. But I tried to explain to them that as a parent, the first thing that comes to us is the, the pain that we see through our children. Anything in this world can be handled. You can change your jobs, you can change anything. But what do you do when your child has even a mild cold and cough? I think parents go into a lot of an emotional disturbance. But when the doctors are not even ready to sort of, you know, serve us and look at our children who are going through multiple medical issues, whether it was respiratory or it was, uh, you know, heart conditions or thyroid, we didn't have any solutions. So we had to tell them to keep looking at our children. And yes, it did start working. Right, ma'am. You rightly pointed out. So you have written three books and uh, the core theme of uh, those books is uh, basically Down syndrome. So what were the idea when you were thinking of writing that book and what are the things you want to highlight with those books? barrier when the child can suddenly slip down. The other books, I'm just putting up all the three books. Each of them comes with a message, which is exactly what I wanted people to understand that you just have to take the today as the best day of your life. And if you're like, you know, I've had parents who have said my daughter or son has taken the first step. And for us, that is celebration time. And we made a note of it and we have released books on people's celebrations. You know, it's it's, it's such a beautiful thing when everybody today is now releasing small booklets for schools, for other children to understand. So we have a large expanded commu- community that contributes towards the progress and it's doing it's doing wonders. My three books. So uh, the name of the first book is With Love from Bubbly, A Child with Down Syndrome, a reference guide second book is life starts at 16 down syndrome and third book is down but not out bubbly's story these are the three books ma'am you know why i wrote the second one jitender i must tell you this every doctor every person i went to in the universe also they told me only one thing they stop growing after 16 so their mental aptitude or their physical will all stop at 16 and you will have a vegetable now my daughter actually started living after 16 we saw with pride that her her brain was absolutely growing and she was absorbing much more. Her retentive capacity was fantastic. My point is, I don't think other people should pass a verdict on us. They don't have a right to do it. If you have not been in that world, don't talk about that world. That world where we have come from is full of tears. Sometimes we laugh because we are a group that loves to laugh. We love laughing for it, nothing at all. And at the same time, we enjoy the smallest, uh, you know, achievements of our children. Everybody's talking about gold medals, this, that and all. For us, our gold medals are our little children who just take the few steps and come close to us. But honestly, they have not understood that world. For them to write and say things like, oh, this child's medical complications, so this child will not survive, should stop, should stop. All these negative language has to stop, whether from society, even the society does not seem to. You know, I I really want to tell you this. Though the world is sounding like they are accepting us, we still have a lot of lot of paths to cross. We are still on the first step of success. And I promise you that before I go, the world is going to be looking at us with a different aspect where they're going to respect us for what we are and why we came into this world. True. 
because uh, there is every everybody's life has some purpose some meaning to it so we can't discriminate people on different things abilities disabilities whatever we call it as so uh, the most important thing is everybody in this world have their unique uh, life experiences and they they enjoy life in their own way so we should respect that and we should always support each other that that is the best thing we can do for everybody i'm i'm very very uh, uh, excited about your message because you have really put it across very clearly that acceptance and you know acceptance with a very pure heart because our children will know if you're accepting with an act okay by the way right they can see through you i'll tell you ask all my parents hundreds and hundreds of parents have said the same thing they can smell it this act that you're putting on oh my god they'll say get out and they are so clear about some things okay so we might not see through it they do because i tell you no one has understood the soul and i do the study of the soul because my daughter is here only to tell us something and if everybody looks at their children and says i love you i love you that's all you have to say they don't want anything else and with the parents i want every parent to connect see connections are so important whether you are sitting in your house or you reaching out to somebody they might have an issue that day that they don't want to tell you but if you call them up like i do all the time i know which parent is having an issue in the morning we spent hours and hours talking to them right you rightly pointed out the important thing is like understanding and accepting people absolutely absolutely right you can uh, you can spread you can you can spread this message through your strong journalistic um uh, connections and to uh, people who have used uh, negative language against us or change all of that change right. all of that and i i came on this program because i want you to help us because you have the power of the pen and the words so we might not be able to get across a lot of people that you can so at your level wherever you can reach out tell them persons with down syndrome are born with a purpose love them your life will change true. touch them your life will change true definitely that's the uh, real core message of today's discussion and uh, best thing we can uh, spread around and if i uh, talk about like your vision mission and goal for next 5 to 10 years from now like you have worked a lot in this field so for next 5 to 10 years what are your plans what do you want to do further see we are only looking at the self advocates now because the self advocates across the country and across the world have progressed they are the decision makers they are the ones who are choosing their careers they are making the lives for themselves we want to empower the parent and through them the child or the adult syndrome and make sure that they are visible and in society the problem is our society is still very very inactive when it comes to or let's say it's not very you know very digressive when it comes to uh, accepting people with uh, uh, let's say not uh, differences but any challenge so uh, when and and the biggest uh, issues i have here is whenever we talk about we never look at a holistic uh, issue so our children have got multiple issues but they are overcoming it so my goal is only to make sure they enter into society without any barriers that is the biggest goal we are having today that they will be accepted they will be noticed they will be accepted with their differences not say that you are different so we can't take you into a particular because today they can get into any field yes they have limitations but we work with the organizations by telling them to uh, help them through their differences that's my right. big goal right ma'am that is really important because inclusion is really the uh, need of an hour so if i talk about uh, your personal and professional yeah, journey absolutely. so far so what are the most important life learnings you have from both the journeys that there is always a barrier there's always a barrier which we have to break so unless the parents are ready for these barriers whether it is uh, you know like schooling schooling was a very very difficult thing for us schools just said oh there are special schools go to special schools so now that option we want to close we don't want to give the options of special schools but we are not really equipped to have our children in schools because they don't provide us with the services that we need so if you look at schools one they don't have the curriculums for us or they all do, don't understand how it is to provide a, a support system in the school for our children so we are working on those areas now and we are trying to see how best because honestly mr jitender what we have seen of our children is 
excellent proactive inclusion in schools where they are coming out so beautifully if they are given a little bit a very little bit of a you know a push initially right. that is very important for us where the teachers work very closely with the parents and with the uh, with the children and the children prove are never different you know all children uh, seem the same but what is different is the attitudes so for me it is attitudinal changes that we're looking at it was the same thing 20 years ago with the doctors the doctors are now very enthusiastic because they know they can and they've understood now is the next section is schooling we are still in the schooling area let me not tell you that things are very easy there are lots of parents like in in places like punjab and all we still have a lot of issues let me right. tell you that people over there have still got this. there are schools there are other schools but no don't give me options of other schools you should be equipped to take my children right there are so many things already happening in this space but but we have very over ambitious parents let me tell you also we have very over ambitious parents uh, who don't want to accept okay right ma'am right still there is huge uh, work to be done so uh, ma'am if i talk about the what kind of in- inspiration you got to create down syndrome federation of india and what resources that does, does this organization offer to the children and the families suffering from down syndrome First of all we never use the word suffering because all the parents will start jumping on your back okay right. they will did we don't accept suffering at all because we are not a suffered population the people mm-hmm. who are suffering are the people who are sitting outside and viewing us so one we don't use the word suffering anymore every journalist has been told to change that a little bit so we say we it is a condition and we are dealing with the condition so what was my inspiration was my daughter she is the most beautiful person and to me i mean a child is a child so yes with all her challenges she was my inspiration continues to be my inspiration though doctor said she will die within 2 years she is 42 and still leading my life and right. she is leads me on into into a, a beautiful world but the important thing here is that with every state with every state we have seen such a successful parental group that sits together plans for their people and because you know that we have different languages and we have different uh, cultural events oh. so we are a, a population that with is diverse but together and uh, there is no difference when it comes to down syndrome so we are like one large huge family and uh, through our conferences to our annual meetings through regular uh, you know checkup on our children we have reached a different level altogether we are right. a healthy population which is what makes us very very excited so people supporting people uh, that is the core theme yes right yes. right ma'am. and you 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 start uh, raising uh, more mothers uh, and fathers who are empowered and who pass on the message to other people who right. are just a newborn and there are uh, so many people like uh, who have their children uh, having down syndrome or any other kind of a uh, disability so they are taking a lead and they are creating uh, an environment not only for their children but also the children around their society or maybe colonies near wherever they are staying staying and they are supporting each other that is wonderful thing so uh, ma'am on to this further if i ask you what are the main goals of uh, dsfi and how it has created an impact in the life of people with down syndrome and their families well let me tell you that when i started out i didn't have a goal there was no goal it was only my daughter and i wanted to uh, learn about how i could deal with her so then i realized that I, unless we have missions and visions we can't move ahead so yes what what do i look at i look at a world which accepts my people without the differences and also even if we are different everyone is different in my opinion everyone is different so cool. unless you are more open in your thinking that is what i'm trying to create is a society that does not look at the differences but looks at the person behind the difference also trying to get give them a quality of life the most important thing for me always was quality of life because if you have a ailing child even society finds that difficult there is also the other thing that we wanted to uh, enhance their life aspirations and give them a chance to be valued members of our society which should be welcoming the, right. the society has to be welcoming for me that's the most important thing also when you say vision um they we want healthy happy and successful by people with down syndrome across the world right so they get the right to education one thing and also they have the opportunities where they can work and earn also for them 
they are working and they are earning but that's a very small section as of now it's right. a very small section we're right. moving on in the year and we will definitely get everyone into it very quickly more work need to be done on this area it it needs many hands to be put together right ma'am so ma'am coming back to you again if i talk about you uh, like if you are a person like you started your journey as in from a family where there were uh, not much opportunities given from that point if you see yourself were you an introvert or an extrovert and how is the change now well i was always an introvert and uh, circumstances change and then you start standing up for your rights and it changes your entire being it is not that we want to be what we are but we were pushed against the corner we had to stand up for our rights and we had to push the medical world to understand where we were coming from because that was the major concerns that we had it wasn't schooling unless a healthy child a child is healthy you can't have the child in society so that was my main concern and we created that huge medical group across the country and uh, yes if you say you know characters change uh we play different roles but all our roles are created by situations so if i were an introvert today it's a totally different thing i can stand on any platform and i will never stop talking about uh the uh, potential of persons with down syndrome right that's really a uh, like drastic change because uh, when things happen in life they make you like different person altogether so ma'am uh, in your journey who were the people supported you the most my mother my mother in law surprisingly most pe- most families don't stick together we are a large joint family Great. and uh, she was my uh, actually the person who held my hand through the whole thing because my daughter was born with visual uh, handicap and uh, many other issues But through all of that she held my hand and she was the one who was instrumental in starting the down syndrome association in tamil nadu in her own house so uh, this is this was the biggest thing and i keep telling families that if in india the biggest thing is having emotional support and family support and we are the luckiest people we are we, we don't even know our luck when we look at our own families everyone comes together to support you when you have a child with a little difference they are all there with you but it all depends on you because we have to be ready to accept that help right that's really important so ma'am uh, how you get your motivation and inspiration from my family is an amazing my husband my children my my son is my biggest motivator my daughter in law is a bigger motivator so and the parents that support me you will not believe when you have 6000 parents who say we want you reka ma i mean it makes me want to live longer because honestly they drive you to it they want they, they want me and i i i think my family is so big now that uh, um, and i keep counting more and more into it but right. this is my family it's not just the small family that we have at home large extensive family all over the world we have people wonderful that's really wonderful so ma'am uh, what and is I your take Uh, yes, that ma'am. our family is called it's our journey it's called hum safar and uh, uh, hum safar family is the biggest family in the world and uh, we are all traveling the same journey with little little stops where we all come together and uh, again the green light comes on and all of us are back again wow amazing so ma'am if i talk about your take on success what do you feel success is all about I don't believe in a word called success at all. It is about what you have collected as uh, good deeds and karma. See, my point is I come from a very spiritual background where it's not about just giving off of your wealth and all. My father used to always say, if you have 10 rupees, give 9, keep 1 because you can't eat more than that. At the same time, if you don't share your knowledge and your information, every small bit of information that I've collected over my journey, I have made sure my parents have I've used it. I again went back to the university when I was 55 to do my PhD because doctors just shut the door on my daughter who was going through depression. It right. was the worst phase of my life because trying to study at 55 you know the universities but it was necessary for the next generation people that we are informed and help them because most children can't come across this little bit of a mental uh, you know illness which we need to support them because it's very difficult very difficult right right ma'am so uh, ma'am uh, we are on last question any message or advice you would like to share with our viewers and listeners whatever information you have share it with your the next uh, families that you meet spread the word around that our children have potential 
game that the universe has given me yes. and I, i and i enjoy it because you it know is. it is like it they reach out to me uh, quicker than anything else because when yes. you are a doctor or you are mrs rekha ramachandran it doesn't make sense ma'am that is all because of your hard work and your uh, work what you are doing to support and help him families so that is no, I, I, that. I, it is not it is not it is not i think god gives you the child i want everyone to realize this very clearly that when anything comes in your life it is for you to learn a better lesson and honestly bubbly came in to change lives of people in india at least and wherever i have connected i have such good friends across the um, uh, across india like in singapore i learned from dr balbir singh i think he's attending the meeting today his daughter my daughter are the same age and uh, you have amarjit singh from punjab you have and all of us come from the same uh, uh, you know era where things were difficult right. but uh, we we become better people and we realize that it's not about the position we have taken it's about for us to become humbler it's about for us to understand that this is a humbling experience that that everything in this world is about learning and you move on to become a better person that's all i i really believe i really believe that it was he gave me this child with a purpose i never advise my parents i only tell them to be parents be calm absolutely calm this is my only advice to every parent your stresses and your life experiences or your irritation should never reach your child because every time you stress the child is only watching stress and that passes transfer so quickly i can't tell you so our children are very sensitive you know jitender i want to tell you that i can call you jitender can i yes, uh, children uh, are our children especially our children come from a very different type of a soul connection where they are very super sensitive whether it is from outsiders or from the family members they just want calm and when you get angry with them or when you shout at them you can just see the whole thing falling your program is gone so please it's very important for all of us to understand that there is a reason why this child came yes there will be difficult moments but this child also gives you the best life right. you know all our other children all our other children will leave us my son lives separately my daughter will never leave me and that's what i love she comes as a package who stays with me and always keeps me grounded right so many uh, like memories are associated with families and they enjoy time which is really important for everybody's life because that is the thing you cherish throughout so the love the affection that never goes off So that's really wonderful never, thing ma'am. Okay, I told you my voice will be the last word. Sorry to say this, no, ma'am, but it comes be. from <laughs> that is because of bubbly not me, okay? And yes, our yes. children are absolutely the protectors and they're giving you a message now Jitender. Your life will change after you have spoken to us. Definitely. Honestly, you'll be a very successful man after this. Ma'am, definitely. God bless that you. Be, that would be your blessings. So ma'am, uh, really wonderful to have you here. Your energy is really wonderful. And at this age I think uh, Thank you, you you are more energetic than me uh, when it comes to like sharing things and knowledge so really wonderful thing uh, i have so many things to learn from you and that would be one best thing from this session for me as well so it was really amazing to hear from you ma'am and i really want you to share more things but we are uh, having a constraint of time so i must say it was wonderful having you here and i'm looking forward to it so probably next time we will talk about more topics and i want to work closely with you wherever whenever i find the opportunity and that would be a like kind of a your blessing that i would be able to connect with you so thank you so much ma'am and i will also share thank you video links uh, along with the interview so that people can connect there can join there take your help and guidance also because you have been wonderful person and you have been supporting so many families uh, not only in india but around the world that is the one wonderful thing and thank you so very much everyone for watching and listening i hope you all must have gathered a lot of information and enjoyed watching it don't forget to like share and subscribe have a good time thank you and bye bye thank you ma'am thank you so much